There are a number of people at NASA, JAXA, and CSA that have been working for many, many years waiting for this moment. So uh, everyone's anxiously awaiting this first mission. HTV also brings with it a number of first-time operations for the International Space Station. As you heard, it's the, the first un, um, unmanned vehicle that brings with it both pressurized and unpressurized cargo. It can carry ORUs or payloads, and for this mission, we've got two payloads on board. It's also the first unmanned vehicle that'll be going to the U.S. segment, and it's our first free flyer capture from the International Space Station. The JAXA teams have done a fantastic job getting the hardware and the rocket ready. CSA has also done a lot of work to help make enhancements on board to enable the SSRMS to do this capture. JAXA's also built a new control center. I've got a photo of it. You're looking at the HTV Ops Control Center. This is actually in the same building as the GEM Control Center at the Scuba Space Center, but it is a different facility. They're also using a different flight control team for this operation. The facility came online a little over a year ago, and they've been using it since then to do both training and some real-time operations with equipment that they currently have on board. In terms of flight control teams, I am the lead flight director. I'll be working the rendezvous and capture phase of the mission, also ingress and then transfer of the two payloads. Orbit one is Ron Spencer. He's working the shift right before me. He'll also be working rendezvous and then HTV's release and departure. The Orbit 3 flight director is Derek Hossman. He'll be working HTV berthing and activation. On the JAXA side, the lead flight director is Koji Yamanaka. He is my counterpart. He'll be on console with me for the rendezvous and capture. He's got a lot of experience with guidance and navigation systems and also with satellite rendezvous. The second JAXA flight director is Dai Aso. He is their lead for the attach phase portion of the mission. He'll be working alongside Derek Hossman to do HTV berthing and activation. The third flight director is Kota Tanabe. He works both the rendezvous and attach phases, and his background is a uh, comm specialist. The fourth flight director is Takashi Uchiyama. He is the lead for the exposed, the exposed pallet, which is what carries the payloads up to orbit. So he'll be working with me as my counterpart during those uh, unpressurized cargo transfers. On board the station, uh, four of the six crew members will be heavily involved in this mission. Nicole Stott, in the top left corner there, will be doing the actual track and capture. Frank DeVinne will be a rendezvous officer, which is, is basically a new role that we have to monitor HTV as it approaches. He's also the prime operator for the GEM RMS, and he'll be operating the common berthing mechanisms. Bob Thursk is the primary arm operator for HTV berthing and unberthing. He'll also be inserting and extracting the exposed pallet. Mike Barrett is one of our contingency EVA crew members in case we had to do an, an EVA to support any of the HTV mechanisms. In that case, Nicole would be going out with him. <coughs> In terms of an HTV overview, I've got a cutaway section that shows you a little bit more about the vehicle and the hardware itself, if I could get that photo. On the left-hand side, you can see the pressurized logistics carrier. It holds eight racks, and it also has soft stowage bags on the front faces of those racks. In the center, you see the unpressurized section. It's got an exposed pallet, and that's what holds the two payloads. On the right side, there's an avionics and prop module. That's what has all of the navigation equipment, computers, and propulsion systems for the vehicle. After HTV launches, it'll rendezvous for eight days, and then we'll do capture on flight day eight. Following capture is berthing and activation. The attached phase will be anywhere from 30 to 45 days long, and during that time period, we'll transfer the pressurized and unpressurized cargo. And then HTV release and departure will occur over a two-day period, and HTV will re-enter. I've got a number of different videos that will take you through that overall sequence. The first one I'll start with is a launch and initial insertion. If I can get